All right, first thing you want to do is drain your coolant underneath the vehicle on the passenger side. You'll see a drain plug, Phillips screwdriver. Loosen that up, make sure you got a drain pan ready. There you go, and let her drain while you're doing the other stuff up top. Go and remove the battery. 10 millimeter nuts on both the cables. And if your battery's dead like this one, it's a good opportunity since the heads are gonna get sent out. You got plenty of time to put it on the charger and then have it tested to see if it's actually a good battery or not. And these, you don't have to remove them all the way. You should be able to just loosen them until the J-hook comes out. Just like that. And then take that out of the way. And the battery out. All right, now we're gonna move the intake tube, flat blade screwdriver. that disconnect the mass airflow sensor and then if you can see it down here there's a 10 millimeter bolt and then also back here behind the headlight there's a 10 millimeter nut Okay, once those are out, move the power steering line a little bit and then work on getting the entire air box out. Okay, now to get this off, there's two 10 millimeter nuts, this vacuum line, then this, which is actually the wiggle, it's just come forward and off. Take a fly blade screwdriver, loosen the clamp going onto the throttle body. This here, it's literally, you can just use your hands. Slide that off and take off the bolt. And just to wiggle it up and off. And there is one more hose over here. All right, now we're gonna remove the radiator. First thing you wanna do is take the coolant reservoir off. If you look at this, tab here there's no screws holding it in but there's just this little tab and if you push it towards the driver's side it'll release and then pulls right out that goes right down right there now just pull straight out now we'll remove this clamp and this clamp and remove the upper radiator hose And then, all right, this radiator is completely destroyed, as you'll see once this comes off. There's the actual plastic state in the hose. It's like that. All right, now you're gonna wanna disconnect the fans. This is on the passenger side. Just pull the release tab, and pull the connector out like that, and then do the same on the driver's side. All right, next step is going to remove the lower radiator hose. Get a hold of the clamp, going on the thermostat housing. We'll go that back. And then also do the one on the radiator. Give it a twist. You might lose a little bit more coolant from here. Maybe. Nope, we are good. All right, last step to get the radiator out is remove the two 12 millimeter bolts holding the hold downs on. Okay. 
Then as you can see, it fell forward. You can just grab the whole assembly and pull it right up and out. Now we're gonna disconnect electrical connectors here that go down to the transmission along with the main engine connector. Nice thing about Japanese built vehicles is this is the only connection they need to worry about for the engine other than the big battery cable for the alternator. So release that, pop that back. And the engine disconnected, we'll take this 10 millimeter bolt out. That harness will slide back. And then we'll have, there's a 14 millimeter bolt. It's actually one of the bell housing bolts down here. Get it broke free. That actually holds that bracket. Just like that, just run it out of the way. Now we're gonna disconnect. We'll take the two bolts out of the slave cylinder and just move it out of the way. this over here all right these are really tight and you'll need a wrench for this side so we'll take that bolt out that nut and bolt off. Then that will come out. Next up, we're gonna remove the one brace for the intake. And I already broke the bolts free since there's kind of really down my video. There's one underneath the starter and then one towards the back on the trans. Once you get them both out, you lift it up and out. Now we're gonna remove the starter, pull this protective boot back. There's a 12 millimeter nut that holds the battery cable on. Take that off, slide the battery cable off, and then we'll put the nut and the washer back on. And then the solenoid exciting wire is just a spade connector. Just wiggle it off, set that out of the way. And there are two, there's a 14 millimeter bolt there, and one on the bottom side of the starter. Shove your arm down in here. You can feel the bolt. Make it easier to get the ratchet on it. Once you get both those 14s out, this ground is free. Then just pull your starter out. Take it out and then just hide this ground out of the way. All right, now we're going to move the alternator. 12 millimeter nut holding the battery cable on to the alternator. Take that off. Slide that off and put that back on so we don't lose it. Disconnect that. Pop both of these retainers free. You have one connection here at the or at the uh, AC compressor. 
and that clips around your oil fill tube. Then we'll just run this and tuck it back out of the way. And then we need to take the belt off, loosen the 12 millimeter bolt on the front. Don't take it all the way out, you just loosen it. And then as you loosen the top bolt, that's how you release your tension on the belt. Now that the belt's off, we can actually now remove this 12 completely. along with this 12. All right, now that we got the 12 millimeter bolt out here, this one, I just lifted the alternator up, put it in so we don't lose it. And it's a little tight, so you might have to take a pry bar on the bracket and just kind of wiggle. Now we're gonna move the power steering pump without taking the lines off. So there's one little electrical connector in the back. Just push down, pull that out. Once you got this disconnected, there's three 12 millimeter bolts. One right back here, which you can get an extension and a 12 millimeter on it. I will leave that sit there for a minute. And then there's a 12 millimeter there and one right underneath the pump. And once that is free, take the whole assembly, and tuck it over here out of the way. All right, now we need to take the AC compressor off. First is the stretch belt. There's a tool to take it off, but we're gonna replace this belt, so the easiest way to do it is to just cut the belt. Just like that. Then there's one, two, one hiding back there and four for the hold down bolts. And then there's one back there. You need a pretty long extension. Once all four of those are out, we can actually take the AC compressor like that. And then what we're going to need to do is take off, there's three 12 millimeter bolts that separate the AC compressor from the bracket. We need the bracket for the lift point to pull the motor out. So you take those three out and then we'll set the AC compressor over here and put the bracket back on. Now we're going to remove the fuel lines the pressure side, the return side, and then we're also gonna do the brake booster vacuum line. For this, I'm pretty sure they probably have a special tool, but I actually found the 5 16 plastic fuel line disconnect tool. Cut it in half. Then you take one half, shove it down where there's these two little dots in the green. Shove this down under it. And then that fuel line's off. Pull this clamp up, take the booster line off, and if these will work, all right, now we're going to remove the remaining 14 millimeter bolt on the driver's side. along with, there is a nut below it. Go to a shorter ratchet. Ow. OK. 
Okay, nuts free. I'll make sure this bolt's free. All right, back on the passenger side, this bolt here, it's loose and we're gonna leave that in. That way it doesn't just split. I'm gonna get these last two out. So when it's all said and done, you're gonna have six bolts and two nuts. One bolt holds the bracket on on this side with the harness. And you have two bolts on the other side that are go through the starter. And your two nuts. other side was all right just like that and then the only bolt left is this one here and we're just doing it to keep the engine and trans together until we're ready to pull it all right now underneath the vehicle you're gonna have three 14 millimeter nuts they'll leave exhaust on and they're gonna be on there pretty tight so you might need to use an impact Like that, the exhaust is free. As we pull the motor forward, it'll it'll come off of there. And then there's a 14 millimeter nut on this side and one on the other side for the motor mounts. So what you want to do is put the hood in the service position. These two holes are where the hood normally is and Subaru is nice enough they put holes below it that actually put the hood you can see in almost a perfectly vertical position. So we got that in the, got that in the service position. We have the chain hooked up. There's a hook on the back of the motor that I was able to get my hook on and then the AC bracket that I was telling you just a nut and bolt through the chain. So and it's hanging there it's ready to ready to come out so we just got to pull that 14 millimeter bolt and the motor will be ready to come motors out the biggest thing is to use the jack on the transmission to keep the motor and the trans level that way you're not putting a lot of stress on the input shaft um, it does help I didn't mention it but you have to disconnect the heater lines 
kind of got caught up on that and then the exhaust didn't want to pop off but once all that was off normally the bell housing and the motor stuck together this time it just popped free so our right, first thing we're gonna do before we start working on the stuff up top we're gonna drain the oil out since we didn't do it before we pulled the motor it's a 17 millimeter socket maybe All right, oil's draining, we're gonna go on the back of the motor. There's this exhaust pipe that goes from the cylinder head to the intake manifold. Let's use an adjustable wrench to get that off. It might be stuck, get on there and... There we go, that one broke free. We'll come down to the one on the head. Screw these all the way. We'll set that aside. Now that, that pipe's off, there's two coolant pipes that go to the throttle body that actually go down to the engine block. So pinch the hose clamp, pull it back. Let's go and do both at one time. Use the pliers to kind of break the, the seal. We'll go and pull those off. Just like that. Then we have the connector right here for the knock sensors. Just pinch that. And then on this side, there's a hose. I'm pretty sure it's PCV. I'll try to get it off without taking this other bracket off. Let's work it off and we'll actually take it and slide it on that side like that. All right, disconnect this harness here. We'll just tuck it away. And then on the bottom side of this connector, there's a tab right here. You pull that back, and then the connection will actually slide off to the side, like that. And then we're gonna disconnect, I believe this is a valve timing solenoid. Pop that off, pop that one off. pop that one off all right now we're going to disconnect cylinders one and three plug wires from the cylinder head we can just kind of set them up out of the way and we're going to disconnect both oxygen sensor connectors that one there that one there you don't have to drop your wrench it might help but then there's a 12 millimeter bolt holding this bracket on. And it should once you break it free. Spin that out by hand. The reason I say that is if you try to take these connectors off this bracket, I can see enough for us there that these connections might break. So instead of breaking them, we'll just do this. And I'll just go ahead and put that back in head for now. Alright. Alright, now we're on the front of the motor. We're going to disconnect the crank sensor, the oil pressure sensor, and the coolant temp sensor. Just like that. Now we have three connections on this head. Pop that one off. Pop that one off. And we have one down here for the cam sensor. Pop that one off. And we have cylinders two and four plug wires. We'll take out. And now we're ready to pull the eight 14 millimeter or 12 millimeter bolts that hold the intake manifold to the cylinder heads. All right, there's a bolt on each end, and then there's two in the middle, so we'll take those out on this side. All 
All right, if we did our job right, knock more shit over. Grab the bolts with a magnet. Both sides. So that way they don't get hung up on anything. We should be able to lift the intake manifold off. All right, we're gonna take this AC bracket off now. Just like that. And then we're gonna take off this coolant crossover. She's got four 10 millimeter bolts. like that. All right, now we're going to take the exhaust manifold off. There's three 14 millimeter nuts on each side. We'll leave that one a little bit on and we'll get the ones on the other side off. All right, and we also have three 14 millimeter nuts on this side. And now we'll have to lift it and take them off and then you might need a hand to get it off all the way. All right, before you drop it off, there is a 10 millimeter bolt here and one on the back that holds this bracket on. And again, I'm gonna take the bracket off because I don't wanna break these wire holders. Once those are off, the wires will hang out of the way. First thing we're going to do is take off the crank pulley. It's a 22 millimeter bolt. So it's going to be under pretty tight, so an impact is best. All right, once that's off, now this is not pressed on. It's starting to come off. If it is stuck, don't pry from behind and break this cover. You can actually just tap it on each side to kind of break whatever's holding it free and pop it off like that. All right, once crank pulley's off, there should be three. This one's already been broke previously, but three 10 millimeter bolts. Once those are out, I cover a pull straight up and off. All right, now once that cover's off, there's 11 10 millimeter bolts that hold the big cover on. Once those are off, break the seal free and just set them inside of there and that's off. All right, once the cover's off, take out these two 10 millimeter Slide the shield off. Then we put the uh, pulley bolt back in. We'll just take a ratchet and rotate the motor slowly. Still got the plugs in it, so we are gonna fight a little bit of compression. All right, we wanna turn it until this little square indentation matches. There's a slight notch in the front cover there. Actually, we'll just take a paint marker. That, you wanna line up with that. And then on this head, this one's already been painted red. We'll line up, there's a notch in the case the rear case you want it to line up with. And then on this head, you want that line to line up with this crack that's in the head. Just like that. All right, now we just want to crack these bolts free while there's still tension from the belts on. Just like that. And then We'll start. Come on. There we go. We're replacing all of the timing components, including the water pump. So I'm not too worried about 
the tensioner or the belt. So we're going to start with this bottom pulley. Take that one off. And then you can see there's... There we go. That one. That one. Take the tensioner off. And there is an O-ring on the tensioner for the washer. If it comes off and you hear something fall, that washer fell down here somewhere, so just make sure you find it. And then we can take the belt off and take the bolts out of the cam gears. like that and that will take a 10 millimeter take these three out to take this cover off and we'll take those two out to take that cover off set that back there Just like that. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take off the like PCV hose off the valve cover. Just like that, we'll set down here with all the other parts. And then we'll take out their six bolts that hold the valve cover on. Grab a screwdriver or a trim tool or something, just get underneath to gasket to break free. Take that off. We'll slide spark plug tube seals off. And then now we're going to take off this oil control valve and we'll take this sensor out back the head. Grab a wrench. And take that one out. Before we pull the head, go ahead and pull your spark plugs out. I already pulled that one out, so pull that one out. Alright, now to pull the head bolts, you want to do it in reverse torque. And it's a 12.14 millimeter socket. that one or at least warp too much since we're sending it to the machine shop to get milled all right all right once they're all loose we can just use a power tool and run them all the way out Actually, just to be safe, we'll just put this one in a few threads as we break the head loose so the head doesn't fall. And we'll grab a pry bar, find a good spot to pry. All right, broke free. We'll take this bolt out. And then lift the head off like that. All right, now we're going to do the other side. We'll take off the PCV hose, the six 10 millimeter bolts out. Something to break the seal on the gasket. Up and off like so. Set it aside. Take those seals off. All right, on 
on this side, we need to take the bolt out that holds the dipstick in. comes right out of this spot right here in the oil pan. Set that. All right, once the dipstick's out of the way, we'll take out these four bolts holding the oil control valve on. Set that out of the way. Throw the gasket down there too, even though we're gonna replace it. And then take the wrench, pop that off, just like that. Now, just like the other side, crisscross pattern to take the head bolts off. And we'll loosen them first. Switch over to power tool and put that one back in a couple of turns. And grab something to pry with. All right, that one's free. Take this bolt out. And pop your cylinder head off just like that. All right, cylinder heads are off. So now, before you send them to the machine shop, you can talk to your local machine shop and see what their requirements are. Some of them will want all the studs removed, along with camshafts, rockers, they'll want them bare heads. Um, some shops will be okay just leaving them like this, especially if you're just getting the surface milled. But before you go any farther, I would call the machine shop you're gonna take them to and find out what they are wanting done before you bring them to them. So for this job, you are going to need two new head gaskets. And the biggest upgrade you can do on a Subaru motor is to go with the multi-layer steel away from the single layer with the coating on them. But we are still gonna put a coat of the copper spray gasket on them just to help them seal. Then you're also gonna need a set of head bolts. And if we open these up, that Arnley is actually really nice. They sort them by side. You got paint to mark them when you're torquing them. But, there's the two with the bigger washers that go in the center of the head, and then the four that have the smaller washers. They actually put the two there different away from the other four. And an easy way to check if you're not sure is you can take a pair of calipers, measure one side, which that measures at just shy of 23 millimeters for the washer. Then you take one on the other side, and it's just over 24 and a half millimeters. So these two are the larger washers. And then obviously when we put the valve covers on, we need valve cover gaskets. And then for tools, we need a 14 millimeter, 12 point socket, short extension. And then I'm just gonna use this ratchet for running the bolts in. Some form of torque wrench that'll do uh, Newton meters is what the torque spec is in. Or to convert to foot pounds, but I'm just going to do the Newton meters since this will do Newton meters and degrees. And then you need a little bit of oil to put on the washers and on the threads when we install them. All right, we got the new head gasket here and we have our copper spray. So we're just going to almost just like spray paint. Oh no, my fingers are copper. Flip it around, do the other side. All right, now we're gonna put it on the block. Now we'll take the gasket and you have your dowel pins in the block. Slide the head gasket on and then we'll grab the cylinder head. Make sure everything is clean and dry when it comes to the surfaces. And 
gently slide it on and then it sits down just like that all right now the head's on there we're going to install the head bolts these are the two that had the larger washer so we'll take a little bit of engine oil go around the heads and then we'll also go around the washers and this is the one you torque everything torques smoothly you're not binding anything up it's like that and we'll put a little bit on the threads just so everything goes together smoothly we don't want to don't want to get them too wet but we just want enough that they'll rotate easily into the block so once we got them oiled up and these are the ones that go in the middle so we'll drop them down in and I always try to start them by hand if you can to make sure they don't cross thread and then we'll take our ratchet and the oil is doing what it's supposed to as you can I'm like zero effort to rotate these down we'll just get them snug and then go ahead and do the same for the remaining four bolts all right that one's down so now we'll take the socket extension off and we're going to use torque wrench the first setting is 29 newton meters all right, we have our torque wrench set to 29 newton meters. Start here, we'll go to 29. You might have to hold the engine stand, it might want to roll on you. Might have to loosen that one up a little bit and retorque that on. Second measure is going to be to 20 or 69 newton meters in the same order. All right, the next step after you've gotten the 69 newton meters down is in reverse order, you will loosen 180 degrees and then another 180 degrees. So the easiest way I found to do that is if you can get a ratchet or something. Parallel, 180. Let's do that for all six. If there's any Subaru techs out there that can explain why you, I'm thinking it's something to do with compressing the gasket and then loosening everything and then retorquing for warpage. But if you can explain the, because it just loosened them pretty much all the way. Let me know down in the comments why they have you pretty much completely loosen the bolts and then go through a torque sequence again. Once you've done the loosening sequence, now you're gonna to go to 42, uh, 42 Newton meters in tightening order. All right, now we're gonna do degrees. The first set is going to be to 90 degrees, in the same order we've been doing them in. Now we're going to go to 45. Race car. 45 degrees. Then the last pass is going to be to 45 degrees. With the new gasket installed on the valve cover, we need to install the spark plug tube seals. And there's actually, you see there's a seat on that side, so cone side is gonna go down. So it's fully seated, like that. And then take the valve cover, 
Put it on there and then take the six bolts. We'll get them started by hand. and just slightly and finally I believe the torque spec is 4.7 foot pounds so we're just going to go 5 foot pounds and just do the same order that we did on the head bolts Just like that but the first thing we need to do is get the old water pump off so first thing we want to do is take out there's two bolts that hold the pipe that goes across the top of the block so we'll take those out and we'll just find a little spot here to hold them and not down in the motor that'd be horrible we've got those out that moves and that tube actually comes into the side of the water pump once that's loose, we'll take some pliers. I got some hose clamp pliers here if they'll even fit. We'll try to squeeze the clamp. There we go. Move that out of the way. All right, we got the hose clamp back. And as you can see, this hose doesn't want to go anywhere. You could try to buy this hose, cut it, rip it off. But a little tech tip is if you get some pliers, grab a hold of the hose and gently twist it you'll break the seal of what's holding it and you can pop it off without damaging the hose all right now we got the hose off let's go and take off the thermostat housing and then I don't know what the heck. I was told this was from using two different kinds of coolant. I don't know if I buy it, but anyways, we are going to, once the motor's in the vehicle, we're leaving the thermostat out and we're gonna run water through the, I guess the upper crossover pipe. So water runs through the whole engine and out of here until it runs clear. That way we know all this crap is out of the motor. And we'll go ahead and take some pliers. We're getting, we got new thermostats. We'll just peel that off. Like that stuff is just horrible. All right. Anyways, now let's take out there is, I believe six bolts that hold the water pump. off just like that all right for parts we are using the gates uh, full timing kit with the water pump all the pulleys tensioner uh, these are extra these are for the water crossover tube 36024 fell pro it's kind of hard to find these o-rings and then obviously your belt will set the thermostat seal aside until off the motors in the vehicle so the first thing we're going to need is the gasket and the water pump to install all right, we got the new water pump, we got the new gasket, and I put a couple bolts in to keep everything lined up. Slide it in, hopefully get them started by hand. All right, once you got them all started by hand, we can take a good old electric ratchet and just run them in. Don't go crazy with it though. Grab our torque wrench. 
These get torqued to 14 Newton meters. Just like that. Now we'll slide the hose back on. Go and take some, take your hose pliers, put the clamp back on, and then with the spring clamps, it's kind of nice. If you see the indentations where the hose clamp was, try to get them back in the same location. That way, it'll actually clamp and keep you sealed. And now we're gonna go up top and put the two 10 millimeter bolts in that we took out for the coolant pipe. And then run those down. And now we will take this plate here, shield, slide it over, kind of goes behind the water pump. There we go. Just like that. A little bit of a snug fit, but. Just snug these down. Just like that. And then the last one to put on is going to be the shield that goes right there. And again, just snug those down, just like that. All right, now we're gonna reinstall the cam gears. And there's actually an alignment pin and a notch in the camshaft. So we're gonna run. I start everything by hand. And then if she moves, you can just grab it and rotate it back. And then we'll do this side. You'll notice that the right side pulley looks different than the left side pulley, or this is left, that's right. But anyways, the difference here is your cam sensor is right there to tell the computer where the cam position is. And on the back of this, there's actually two notches. And that actually picks up those so it knows when this cam is at TDC. And one thing you notice on this side is that the timing marks will not be lined up. The camshaft actually had to be rotated since the valves were open when you took it off, but it doesn't matter because right now at TDC, the pistons are fully sat back in the motor. When we take it off, the valves are open. So for cleaning them and getting them checked and everything, we just rotated the camshaft to get them to be fully seated. But there's our mark that needs to line up with up here. So I'll probably just use this. Just like that. And you kind of play on a teetering point. If I went too much farther, it was gonna to wanna to go this way. If I go too far this way, it's going to want to bounce there. So that is going to be good enough since we have the belt actually has a mark that will line up with that mark, this mark, and this mark. All right, before the belt goes on, we're going to install three of the pulleys. That, well, the tensioner, the cog pulley, and the smooth pulley that does not have the ridge on the back. And so it doesn't matter what order we install them in, but take your medium strength blue Loctite. If I even have this shit open. Nope. 
pause. Take two, blue Loctite, and it is open this time. Put a little bit on the bolt, and the cog pulley goes down here. We'll take the smooth pulley, a little bit on there, that one goes right there, and they're 14 millimeter bolts. Get that one started, and then we'll put a dab on the tensioner pivot bolt. That'll go up there. And we'll use our handy dandy electric ratchet and run them down. Alright, we're going to torque these bolts down, the two idler pulleys and the tensioner. We got set to 39 newton meters. Nope, that one's already over tightened. Alright. Alright, 39. 39. And 39. All right, now we're going to install the timing belt. We have the dotted line. That's going to be what goes on the crank and arrows. The arrows are going to go to the right. So we will slide that on like that. We'll go ahead and run this over to this cam. And the line on the cam will actually line up with the line that's on the belt. Then we'll come over on this side. And then the same over here. There's a line on the belt on the cog that'll actually line up with the notch on the camshaft. If all three of those line up, then she is in time. So now we'll run this around. All right, we rode the struggle bus for a minute trying to get this belt on and come to find out with everything lined up, if this timing mark is perfectly on the center, this one wasn't. And then that was pretty much given as not enough slack. So we got this one lined up and freed up just enough slack we were able to get this on. Don't ask me why it worked, but it did. But now the pulley's on, that's lined up, that's lined up, that's lined up. We take our final smooth pulley, put a little bit of that blue Loctite on it. And then it actually slides up under the belt. And once you get it started by hand, run her in, and then that one gets torqued to 39 newton meters. And in the description, I'll put the foot pound conversion. There we go. Now, once we know that our timing marks are lined up, the arrow is facing the same way, everything is tightened, we can pull the pin. And the timing belt is installed. All right, the last piece of the actual timing puzzle is this little shield. We'll start it, start that one. And we'll start this one. And as you can see, it has some wiggle room. Well, Gates with their kit comes with this spacer that will actually slide in between the belt and the spacer. And then we can run, run those down. And we use, use this handy dandy power tool. And there probably is a torque spec for this, but I don't have Subaru's actual torque specs and my sources don't give it to me. So we're just gonna make sure they're snug. And then we pull that out, just like that. 
All right, the last thing before we forget, and I almost forgot, is we need to tighten down the cam sprocket bolts. They get torqued to 78 newton meters. So, have a tool here to hold the cam. That one's tightened down. This side's gonna be interesting. I believe they have a tool that holds onto that, but. That worked out pretty well if you actually pinched the belt. It just kind of held it and 78 newton meters isn't crazy. So, all right, now that the timing's installed, we're gonna install the water crossover. We got the new O-rings here, they go there and there. Now I've read a lot where they talk about these O-rings not liking the seal. So we're gonna use, oh no, it's not Subaru. Anyways, we're gonna use the best RTV that was ever made and put a little bit down, move the water outlet out of the way. Let's go down in there, put a little bit down in the, where the O-ring goes. Now we'll take the O-rings, kind of press them down into the RTV and you get a little bit of smears up over the top and that is okay. We put a little bit on the top of it too. That way, once the water outlet's on there, it'll seal up completely. And the same, we'll drop that side on. Push that one down in. Smear the RTV around it a little bit, like that. And then grab the crossover tube and set it down. And what, with your RTV, you don't want to wiggle this around a lot. So make sure you set it down pretty well where you want it. And then run the bolts down. And those get torqued to, I believe, 5 Newton meters. All right, all the timing is installed. The pin is pulled from the tensioner. Our water outlet's installed. So I think the last thing we're gonna do in this video is install the timing cover. So it's just gonna slide on like so. And you have one that doesn't have a shoulder on it. That actually goes, leave. Yeah, it goes down here. that one in and then the rest of these shoulder bolts will go in the larger holes piece of this puzzle is to put this outer cover on there's actually this channel that'll go over the corresponding channel on the rear cover take a little bit of there we go once that's on and that top one's already been broken so we're gonna put the two bottom bolts in getting pretty close getting ready to put it back in um, this is gonna be pretty simple uh, 12 millimeter socket 12 millimeter wrench intake gaskets we got the intake manifold sitting over there so we're gonna get that installed get the wiring hooked up and we may even swap out the plug wires and get the plugs in all right for the gaskets there's the big opening and a little opening and on the 
head side, you'll see that mark, and then on the other side, there's the larger opening, and then that'll go on the other side. There's actually like alignment dowels, almost like for the cylinder heads. Slides on like that, we'll do the other side. Slide on. There we go. And that will slide like that. And then we'll grab the assembly. And gently set it on the gaskets. Just like that. All right, the first thing before we put any of the intake bolts in is there's this bracket for the uh, oxygen sensor connectors. It actually goes right underneath the intake. So you actually have to lift the intake to get enough clearance to get it started. And then let's we'll work it down with the wrench and just get her good and tight. You might have to actually switch from the wrench. There we go. Let's kind of find a way to get fingers in there enough to rotate it. Once we get her down to the bottom, we can grab the wrench again. Just like that. And now, uh, drop your wrench if you want to. We don't need it anymore. We'll go ahead and start the intake bolts, I'd start one in each corner. That way we know that the intake is squared up and now we'll put the remaining six in. All right. And then on the inner ones, it might be easier to use a magnet. What are you looking at with that? Okay. It's kind of stick it down in there instead of trying to do some kind of miracle drop. Call it drop and pray. And then we can take our, there it is. We can slide that down in there. Make sure that one started. That one started. We'll do the same on the other side. Start and I will take the handy dandy electric ratchet. Turn them down snug. Torquing down, they get torqued to 25 Newton meters.
just like that. All right, now we're going to install the this will be EGR tube. Just threads in like so. Just grab the the universal wrench. Give it the old the old German torque spec, good and tight, just like that. All right, now on the left head, we'll install the PCV tube. Kind of wiggle it down and on there, and then the clamp is one you can just use your fingers, just like that. And then on the back side of the motor, we'll hook up. The harness for the knock sensor until it clips. We'll hook up the coolant tube into the first side of the throttle body. Just take a pair of pliers, get that one on. Do the same for the lower coolant pipe. Just like that, and then we'll install this air tube. And the end of it. This one will be a little tight, but once you get it lined up, it's gonna start working it. Just like that. All right, now we're on the right head. We'll connect the black connector to the gray sensor. The blue to the black, white to the gray. And now we'll take the PCV tube and connect it to this valve cover. Again, just wiggle it, be kind of gentle, especially if this hose is a little hard, so we don't want to break it. Just like that. And if we come around, well, yeah, just. All right, now we're on the front. This actually goes to the power steering pump as a power steering pressure sensor. We have your coolant temp, black into gray. And we have a gray into black for your crank sensor. And we just have the spade connector that's your oil pressure sender. Just like that. And then on the left head, we have on the very side, we have a black into black, another white into a gray sensor, and then blue into black, just like that. All right, now we're going to install plugs and the wires. We're going to do the plugs first. Gap is 39 to 43 thousandths. Spark plug socket. Don't know if I need an extension or not, but. All right, now we're going to torque them down. I switched from the swivel socket. Since my swivel one has a magnet, my regular ones don't. That way when you're torquing, it's not all loosey-goosey but like I said all right now we're gonna do plug wires these NGKs are actually really nice they come pre-numbered to pretty much replace your OEM wires and these connections here the little clips this is a little screwdriver release the tab just like that then we'll just pick pick number two and we'll just peel it off Be a little tight back here. All right, I got number four off after one to fight like crazy. We'll slide the new wire down. Push it on until it clicks. And then number four is the rear, so we'll. Use the rear notches like so. And before we finally click everything down, we'll go ahead and put them on the plugs. Like that. Make sure everything looks good and finally we'll clip those down now we'll do cylinders one and three all right for cylinders one and three just like the other side 
pop this clip up like that. All right, cylinder one is at the top. Wiggle it off like that. Grab the new one. I really like that these are marked. Looks original equipment. And it just looks better too. All right, that clipped on. Something about like that. We'll do number three. Slide that on until it clips. And run them down, number one. Push on until it clips, number three. Just like that. That looks even. Push it on just like that. All right, finally we're gonna install the AC bracket, which actually has the lift point on it. And we're installing this so we can lift the motor back in to the vehicle. Put them all started, they're 14 millimeter. Run them as far as we can by hand. At least the ones that we can easily grab. Now with that installed, we are th this thing is ready to go back in the vehicle. Um, we're going to do the exhaust in the vehicle to be a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs>